The Chiefs dynasty was one that many had a hard time ever imagining an ending to. Patrick Mahomes was playing too well, Pacheco too consistent of a back, and the receiving core wasn't even as bad as people thought it would be in the absence of Tariq Hill, as he was rocking with the Dolphins. And even though there were some cracks on their offense starting to show, like how in the last two years, if their leading receiver wasn't Travis Kelsey, they lost 5 out of 15 of those games, where if Travis was their leading receiver, they only lost 3 out of 19 of games, with all 3 of those games coming in 2023, which we'll get to the meaning of. But, with what this means for right now is that if teams could force Patrick Mahomes to throw to other receivers than Taylor Swift's boyfriend, your chances of winning the game just doubled. And I think everyone to some degree or another kind of knew this as well, which is why they brought in Juju Smith-Schuster to begin with to help stem the bleeding as well as giving bigger roles to other wide receivers on the rosters and hope that they would step up to the plate. One of those receivers being no other than Kadarius Toney, the man of the hour. So the backstory on Toney though is he's a Florida graduate and entered the NFL in the year of 2021 and was initially picked up by the Giants and with the Giants he had uh, pretty below average numbers honestly but it kind of makes sense because the Giants were pretty below average team but he did show some flashes catching six passes for 78 yards against the Saints and 10 catches for 189 yards against the Cowboys so it seemed at least early on you could lean on this guy and he wouldn't buckle under the pressure though ultimately if you go back and look at his lack of production for the Giants it seemed to be more at the fault of whatever the Giants had going on during that time with switching between Danny Dimes and Jake Fromm as opposed to anything that was the fault of Kadarius. In 2022 though, things got better for the Giants with a healthy Daniel Jones and the return of Barkley and it showed all throughout the season. The more complete offense, meaning that they were trying to get Tony the ball in different ways as he was after all this fast, shifty receiver who had great open field speed and the ability to pick up yards and make people miss. And it's enticing to any team to try to make use of that talent. Now, it may be obvious to you, as it is to me, where you'd want to put a fast, twitchy athlete with great open field speed and a good ability to make people miss, but to the Giants, Tony never got to take a rep at one of those roles. So let's bring in the team themselves, the annoyingly good, never seems to go away Kansas City Chiefs, who came in and actually traded for Tony to add more depth to their wide receiver room, but also to do something more important, which is return punts for them. And this is where we'd see his potential really shine through. I mean, as soon as he got to the Chiefs, he would make an immediate impact. Yes, he was still seeing limited opportunities to catch the ball off of a pass, only getting 20 targets across the first seven games he was active for them. But for the most part, that Tony that we knew and understand in 2023 wasn't really rearing his head. And he was securing punts, which had been a big issue for the Chiefs prior, as well as steadily chipping away at the opposing team's net punt. But those little chips would really come alive in the Super Bowl when his limited offensive production Production would be completely ignored in the light of his arguably game-winning punt return of 65 yards to the five-yard line, not only setting a Super Bowl record, but setting up one of the only easy scores of the night. So after this, Tony was riding high. He was on top of the world with one of the most important plays in a Super Bowl. So with all this hype up, let's bring you to the 2023 season, the year of Kadarius' downfall. Thank you very much, Kadarius Tony, right through the hands of Tony. Dropped again by Tony, who has had a really poor run. This can't happen. These receivers can't get out of the way of hurting the team. Too many times at the end of the game. And the latest Kadarius Tony mistake turns into a turnover. He's not going to trust him anymore. He's just... It's coming down to a critical situation, and that's where the ball has to go. Now, it really started out bigger than Cladarius. Really, the whole Chiefs wide receiver core was pretty bad off. Like I said at the beginning, if the Chiefs could throw the ball to Kelsey in 2022, and he was their leading receiver, they won that game 100% of the time. But if you shut him down, it was hit or miss if the rest of the core could really carry them. Well, in 2023, that reliance on Kelsey became overwhelmingly abundant. Against the Lions, the big takeaway from the game was that Mahomes had no help. Not just little help, but actually no help. I mean, he was having to throw to guys who couldn't really get open, guys who were dropping catchable balls, and Tony definitely played a part in this, notably in a pass right through his hands that ricocheted to a defender to give the Lions seven points. And while people would start to notice how bad some of Tony's gaffes were in the first game of the season, he was just in the mix of bad play happening and not the lone star of the can't catch the ball show. And as much as I am a base and anti-chief pill Giga Chad YouTube, 
YouTuber, I actually felt bad for Patrick. Like, legitimately felt bad watching him play and make good throws and like throwing to practice dummies just having to watch it bounce off of people. And you could see it in every drop. It started to chip away at Patrick Mahomes' sanity. But these games of just complete and total offensive ineptitude were quickly nipped in the butt as Chiefs soared through their next six games. Not without any mistakes, but with a pretty equal distribution of blame and credit for those wins. But then we get to the Denver Broncos games. Just another bout of that endless ineptitude by seemingly everyone but Mahomes. Even the beloved Kelsey had some ugly drops, but once again, more good passes, more balls bouncing off of players more of Patrick Holmes' mentality getting slowly and slowly crushed. So now you've seen the big buildup, mistake after mistake by the Chiefs, receiving core was slowly whittling down Mahomes' mental game. However, no one person had been the man under his fire up to this point. The anger had been pretty well spread out on the whole offense, and their loss to the Eagles was really no different. More drop passes, and of course, a drop potentially game-winning touchdown pass and a drop pass to pick up a fourth down and keep the drive alive. Chip by chip that mentality was gonna crack. But now you may have noticed that Tony has been awfully quiet. It had appeared his early blunders with the ball had pretty much taken him off Mahomes' passing list, having only been targeted five times in the last five games. So here's how you break Mahomes. Let me take you to the Bills game. This infamous play, the one that the whole internet went into an uproar over. His receivers had already found him so many ways to lose the ball game, despite his perfect passes, that it had even haters like me feeling bad. But they were still in this game, despite it all. So then, on a second and ten, the game in the balance, down by only three points in the fourth quarter, Mahomes completes a beautiful pass to Kelsey, who brilliantly sees Tony running behind him, tosses him the ball to run in for a touchdown, and what what everybody thinks is a genius play, but what wasn't a genius play was Tony lining up very clearly offsides without ever checking with the refs, nullifying this play, removing the touchdown, and ultimately leading to the Chiefs going forward on downs and losing. And in a season of drops and giving away interceptions, this was probably the biggest crack in Mahomes' mentality. When one of the best plays of the whole NFL season gets called back due to such a stupid penalty that revolves around one of the most basic assignments you have as a receiver, simply lining up properly, and now his receiving core is finding new and innovative ways for him to lose games due to that, we finally started to see Mahomes truly break, this time lashing out at referees like we hadn't seen from him before, all as a result of just that pent up frustration he's had throughout the year. But finally on a Sunday game against the struggling Patriots team, the Chiefs were ahead by 17 points. The only way for this game to get out of hand and get back in the Patriots favor would be some ridiculous turnover like in games past. But after forcing a punt and getting the ball back on the 24 yard line, early in the fourth quarter, a slant route over the middle, Mahomes throws it, what you could almost be called a perfect pass. Maybe it could have been centimeters lower. Maybe, given who he's throwing it to, it could be a bit softer. But overall, you can't ask for a better ball than this. But that ball hits Tony in both hands, 10 fingers, and bounces straight through it and into the hands of a Patriots player to slowly but surely keep their hopes alive. While they wouldn't go on to win this game as the world watched that camera pan back to Patrick, we see a broken man. A man who can't even trust a throw four yards in front of him directly into the hands of receiver. A man who after this season will be seeing ghosts of everything that he did right and still going against him. And the man to really put those final nails in this coffin these past two weeks has been the man himself, no other than Cladarius Tony. So if you enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing because I'm doing more of this long form stuff now. As always, have an amazing day and pray for Patrick Mahomes.